All right, and we are live. I am your host, Jose or Seth, whatever the hell you want to call me. And just at the top, I want to go ahead and remind everybody to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe on all the socials. Everything is linked down in the description box. That'd be YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, Twitter being the best place to keep up to date with every single person here. Uh, Today, we have a smaller cast. We are joined by Sarah, as always. Oh, whoop. Sarah, did you cut out? Uh, Did I? Oh, there you are. Kiss. Hi, I am. Sarah's still Hello. alive. And uh, we don't have any of our other co-hosts on here. Uh, so it's going to be a much more intimate show, especially now that we have a very special guest on, uh, Bronson. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Bronson Lee. Um, I think I could be described as content creator adjacent. I don't make a content. I just appear on everyone else's. <laughs> You are chaotic good. Well, then you you are serving your exact uh, role in life exact right here, purpose. buddy. Uh, oh yeah, and your other hosts aren't here. They they ran in fear. Th- this is true of, <laughs> yes. of, of my of my terrible takes. I think it was in Discord. I, I to- was the only one that 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 stood tall. I think it was in Discord. I put like, hey guys, I got like a last minute guest for us. And Sarah's like, who <laughs> is it? Tell us. I'm like, uh, and then and like immediately after you see Bronson is in the server and everyone's like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we realize, we realize the chaos we have brought to our doorstep. <laughs> the chaos. Um, so what are some of the, I guess, like, how did you get into games? And like, maybe what's some of your favorite ones? I, I, I can speculate on one of those. <laughs> oh Yeah. Um, play started playing games of like the Super Nintendo era. Like I grew up in Idaho, so it wasn't too much to do. So a lot of us were like, "Oh, like I had a Super Nintendo, my friend had Genesis, kind of swapped back and forth, that kind of stuff." And then from there, just kind of takes over. There's worse hobbies to have. I've I've heard. So I kind of just stick with that. Favorite games. Oh, you you know of one. Mine, <laughs> my current favorite is Among Us. You are the uh, Among Us Messiah. You you've brought I, together entire groups of people just based on that. This this is true. I was like a decent amount of like weekly games or whatnot. We have a Saturday afternoon game. Um, yeah, I've I just looked. I have something like 140 hours in Among Us, and it's not something like I expected. Like, I've played those kind of games before, those mafia types, those werewolf types, but it's like, you know, in the situations we're in now, it's more less a game and more of like a social platform. Like, we can consistently communicate with it. It's the icebreaker, essentially. Right. And it's helped me It's helped me meet so many people. I know. And like, make so many friendships. I know, like, the, the common joke is, like, go ahead and vote Bronson out because you mm-hmm. sus, even though when you're not, or, you know, immediately killing you off, which I am very guilty of. Yes. But I, I don't think I, I think everyone knows, but they don't verbally express it or explicitly exp- express it. It's that uh, you you put a lot of goodwill into the world, man. I think you should be proud of yourself. I hope so. I really do. That, that's that's we the main you, goal. <laughs> we love well, you. Thank you. I, I'm pretty thank sure I can you. speak for everyone in all the servers here and that they all love you. Yeah, except for the except for the two people that I killed in Among Us when I was standing still. <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not sure this is going to be a recurring part of the show, probably just based off of what people have been playing or maybe mm-hmm. even new releases. But we're going to do the Metacritic guessing game. We have three titles. Um, oh, boy. Scott Pilgrim, the original release. What did it get? The original? Oh yeah, because there probably wasn't um wasn't people who reviewed the the port of it. I'm gonna yeah. guess like an eighty seven because that was really well reviewed when it came out. Bronson? Mm-hmm. Seventy seven, something like that. There's issues with that game. You are cheating, you motherfucker. <laughs> Wait, really? Uh, yeah, it's right on Damn the dot. <laughs> the, uh, the the PlayStation three version on Metacritic specifically. Nice. I just remember it coming out and like I didn't really see people that had issues with it. Like I remember yeah. like it kind of blew up. Like it was one of those like, oh, we don't think this game based off of this weird this, this, nerd this movie license is good. Yeah, this <laughs> license property that Ubisoft has. Like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. No, I, I know what you mean. Like the, the strengths of it far outweigh the cons, yeah. but there's cons there. I th- oh no, I I'm sure, yeah. I think we'll probably get into it a bit more later, but yeah. I think um I think the re-release actually has a lower Metacritic score. I'd have to double check that. 
but like for me like um what's special about that game is obviously you know it's it's, it's attached to the ip but it's the um it's the art style it's the animation it's the music mm-hmm. and then you can also say like the simplicity is kind so of the good. beauty but also the, the the downside of it is also the simplicity but I, I think that's a fairly decent Metacritic for it. Uh, let's see. Next one we have on here is Battlefront 2, the EA version. Did oh, it, boy. Like 50 something? Like, I swear that was not liked when it came out. Was it? I'm going to say, I'm no, just going to throw out. I, I will <laughs> say it has gotten substantially better since launch. They yeah, took out yeah. the, um, cause before yeah. you could only like level up your characters, um, through loot boxes. And that would like make you like statistically yeah. stronger. Uh, yeah, now you that. now you just have to play the game, you level up, and then you can oh, buy those cards. I don't know if they did what a lot of outlets did with like Destiny Two, where they like rescored it after a couple years, or like um, the, for the, the Metacritic game. here, it all looks like 2017 stuff. Okay, oh, so I'm boy. gonna give it like a 58. <laughs> 58. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably being too too uh, generous, but I I remember how universally pissed off everyone was it was I pretty bad people thinking the campaign was like pretty good but not long enough that's what my understanding was i'm gonna say just 60 60 uh what did you would you say sarah 50 55 like a 50, i think like a 58 uh bronson you win it's at 68 damn it oh i think it probably deserves a little bit better now mm-hmm. And like, I think like, so too. I think they turned the corner with it, but I remember like it got to the point where like Bob Eager, the head of Disney, called um Andrew Wilson at EA. He's like, Why are people talking about <laughs> Star Wars badly? You have two minutes to explain yourself. I'm you're, paraphrasing. You're basically. fucking up I believe his exact words, why the fuck are you fucking up Star Wars, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Very again, professional I'm CEO not- talk. All I remember was that I had friends who like who are big Star Wars like nuts, and I say that in like the best way possible, who like adored that camp campaign. Like they mm-hmm. loved it. Like they were like, Oh, the campaign's a reason a reason to buy it. And I was just like How long is campaign though? I think it's okay for what it is, like uh length aside. Um but I think what they've done for the multiplayer, just like at constantly adding new and free stuff in there is pretty commendable. Mm-hmm. Well like was before again like no man's sky like uh destiny when like outlets would would go and re review stuff so i mean i would be interested to see if they had gone and re and re review this but i doesn't look like they did or mm. de- decide to go back and do it yeah i figure most like re-reviews most people aren't going to do that so like i feel like it wasn't good i feel like they- if it's just something as in taking out the the micro trans transactions. I don't mm-hmm. think there's enough reason to like go back and like re-review something. I think people are, are probably a little bit more choosy with the titles they go back because they people barely have the bandwidth to keep up with new releases, let alone going back to the already pre existing library of ongoing mm-hmm. games. And so like yeah. they like exceptions are made for stuff like a destiny or um or the division or whatnot. Like continuing games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. let's see we, we have one more game on here but i think it's more tailored to Corey because he's the one that's been playing it the most which is uh man eater so we'll go ahead and save that for next time he's on <laughs> uh to jump into the news um i, th- I think i had mentioned it earlier like like the news we had done last week it was all just kind of older stuff that we hadn't had the chance to get to and it was a slow news week because it's the holidays mm-hmm. so it's just like oh cool i don't have to write stuff for a while and uh yeah, whole bunch and of stuff just popped out of nowhere. It's open. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like there, there was like any kind of terrorist attack going on or anything, but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. news happened. Yeah. Gaming game news, the important stuff in life. Speaking of punching Nazis. Oh, oh that's a good segue. You should be proud of that. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Bethesda has announced that Machine Games is working on an Indiana Jones title. Which I I've been saying it for fucking forever. Not not specifically Indiana Jones, but Machine Games has I I with the Wolfenstein games at least um, they have such a masterful uh, craftsmanship when it comes to storytelling, when it comes to gameplay, character building, and all that. Like I I've been saying it's like look I know three four three has been kind of doing like a kind of eh job with the Halo franchise. 
And so when I was mm-hmm. thinking about like, oh, what are some first person shooter companies that, that would make a great fucking Halo game? Like Machine Games was constantly at the top of them. Just like they could really uh, put a nice spin on this. But uh, a- as Sarah hinted, um, yeah, them working on Indiana Jones games kind of plays to their strength because they are still going to be punching Nazis. So <laughs> it's, it's right up their alley. <laughs> and like another reason why this excites me so much. A, I'm just, I, I love the Indiana Jones franchise next to the haunted mansion my favorite disneyland ride is the indiana jones adventure like it's just that's like my that's one of my sole reasons for going to disneyland um, on top of other stuff but like them making an indiana jones game excites the hell out of me because of how cinematic they made wolfenstein handling an actual property that's based off of a movie like i like i don't know just the whole idea of them doing an indiana jones and with how buck wild they went with the Wolfenstein stories, mm-hmm. they can even go more buck wild with an Indiana Jones story. I mean, I just, just like, mythical shit. What? I just trust them on every single front. Like when you think of, I, I mean, before it kind of it probably would have been Bioware. Like if we had just come off like Mass Effect two or three, I'd been like, yeah, fuck yeah, Bioware. But I have like absolute fucking faith in Machine Games to uh, go ahead and do it justice. And I, I can just imagine the board meeting when. Um, when Bethesda's going to them saying, like, look, you have all these properties you can pick. Which one do you want? And then mm-hmm. I, I don't know who the CEO is, he, but he probably slammed his hand on or his fist on the freaking table. He's like, we need to be able to punch Nazis. Do you have one of those IPs? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, we have Indiana Jones. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Have you uh, right. have you played any of the Wolfenstein games, Bronson? Yeah, I played through the first one. I played through a little bit of the second one. I'm glad that they're getting an opportunity. Not to say like Wolfenstein isn't like a big franchise, <clears throat> big franchise. It's big deal. Mm-hmm. It's 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 major major league stuff, and I think it's interesting. Like I think at this point, Lucas Arts is doing more and more stuff. Um, they're not Lucas Arts, Lucas Lucas Film Games or whatever they're calling it. They've established this stuff and kind of as part of their rollout every franchise that they have is kind of getting play like indies going with machine games and bethesda and then star wars is getting their stuff maneuvered a little bit i think we're going to get into that further but it's interesting it feels like they're kind of doing what marvel games did back in the day where they took all their licenses back and they're like, all right each property is getting a specific developer that we handpick like we'll keep our mobile games those make money that's fine yada 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 we have we want our console games or our bigger games need to be quality first. So it's like Insomniac got Spider-Man, Square Enix got Avengers, Telltale got Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a new Marvel vs. Capcom. Now, some of that stuff didn't pan out, but that was clearly the idea. Right. It's it's more adding to like a general portfolio to keep um, their franchises like in the good grace of like, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? For the public conscious. Like even if it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily... Uh, sell well as long as they keep that that hype train going yeah a part of me wonders if microsoft hadn't had bought bethesda if this would have even been happening i would imagine Mm. this has been in the works i feel not like not like saying that in like in like a bad way like that's totally not what i'm getting at but having microsoft behind them and like microsoft either disney went to them or they went to disney and they're like look we have these story-based studios that we would love to use some of your properties and make story-based games out of. And yeah, but that you Bethesda and story, you can argue with a lot of people about whether Bethesda is good at telling like legit stories, but I argue that machine games is their best story-based studio that they have. I would agree. And, and with them just going like, Oh, Hey, we have this company who has made these amazing like cinematic story-based games. We would like to use one of your properties. And a, a part of me just wonders if Microsoft had like, had like a hand in helping them reach out to Disney or Disney reaching out to them. I think because, it's, because I feel like if Disney just saw they did a game about punching Nazis, Disney's going to back away from that really hard. Not not because you're punching Nazis because because that's a good thing, but because you know their family fa- family friendly branding and their imagery, like they would have been like, oh, we don't know, but with Microsoft behind them. I feel like they're like, okay, you can hit the you can hit the yeah. thing that we're looking for. I yeah. think. They handpick machine games, I have to imagine. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think they were like, all right, everyone here, like they 
got a list of people like, all right, give us your pitch. This is how I suspect the Bond stuff went for IO as well. Where mm-hmm. they're like, okay, pitch it, pitch it and go for broke. Cause like, think about it for like, from like the initial surprise I'm like of IO getting a Bond game. I'm like, wait, that fits perfectly. Same thing like with machine games and like an Indiana Jones game. Even if it's not a first person game, that feels like that's a good fit. Like we that are... got... Sorry, go continue. I was just gonna say it sounds like a fucking uh, match made in heaven. Like they just slot in so yep. freaking nicely. I yep. mean, I was gonna say we are failing to mention that Todd Howard is executive producing this. Like it's not just machine games doing this. Like they Bethesda Games confirmed during during the teaser, Todd Howard was, would serve as an executive producer. I take that title with a little bit grain of salt so, because producer and executive producer roles can mean so many different things. Like uh but it's, like on but how hands on they Todd, are. That that Todd's attached to it in some way. And plus he, apparently a couple months ago he did a interview with someone about being bought by Microsoft. He was teasing Indiana Jones. He had Indiana Jones props. Yeah, he pulled a phone. he pulled a Phil Spencer having in the background of yeah. his fucking Zoom calls. And then also, I actually ended up finding out because there was someone on Twitter uh, j- uh, at Jordan Oleman who downloaded the the trailer in H- HD because we obviously knew that that they would hide something in this in this trailer. From his tweet, it looks like Machine Games Indiana Jones product is set in Vatican City, October 1937. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, which, so isn't that before most of the movies? Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, but it says the main thing spot in the in the trailer is it is a travel ticket. Ticket mentions that he's on embarking on an overnight service to Rome, and then um, and then like oh it uh, there is somehow there's a typed page in this trailer that's hella blurry using an hd trailer he found out that it that is a it is a message from from indy saying i will be arriving in rome which means we are getting the 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 da vinci code on heroin and i'm here for it would you say the year was for this one? 1937 from what this from what this so guy this got is after the, the ark of the covenant and like right before in India has uh, baby Shia LaBeouf. According to the website I'm reading right now. Baby Shia so it'd be after the main three movies. But mm, it's just incredibly okay. interesting that they're going that machine games chose to go for like Vatican because again, with what they did in Wolfenstein, are we going to punch the Pope? Is the Pope going to be like a Nazi? I would, like, I, would oh. I would love to play Assassin's Creed 2 again. <laughs> I was about because it's like that's that's like my only fucking thought is Assassin's Creed Two. I'm like, oh god, is the Pope gonna be a Nazi? Are we gonna have to like pistol whip the Pope? And you, you get a joke. That's gonna that's gonna be the <laughs> thumbnail for this. <laughs> it is it is it is machine games. I'm not I'm not gonna discount anything. Mm-hmm. Like with their crazy ass of Wolfenstein writing, I'm not gonna discount anything. I am not. I'm not. I'm not taking anything off the table, and that's what excites the hell out of out of me is putting a studio like them in charge of of an Indiana Jones property because it's like we've had un, Uncharted for the past ten or so years. That's basically just been like mm-hmm. the building version of Indiana Jones, kind of. Mm-hmm. So it'll be really interesting to see an actual studio take on a original Indiana Jones story. And I mean, maybe Disney got the story and okayed it. We don't know, but it, it's. I guess Bethesda confirmed that this is an original story done by Machine Games. I think, so, what's, I think what's really interesting about this uh, situation is that people have brought up the question of whether this will be exclusive because people are already having this discussion with the Bethesda games in general oh, no, if um, if they're going to be coming to their competitors, which mm-hmm. would be, um, um, I guess, not necessarily PC because of Game Pass, but uh, ma- mainly Sony. And I, I know people are saying like, oh, Indiana Jones is too big of a property to to be exclusive to just Xbox. And I'm just thinking like one of PlayStation's biggest games right now is fucking Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. Which so, like, so, it's not something I expected to be like full exclusive. Exactly. So if Spider-Man can be exclusive, I, I sure as hell don't see uh, why that would not be the case for Indiana Jones as well. But, I think it depends. I think, I think it honestly does depend. I think I suspect this was probably happening before Microsoft came in. Cause this is the kind of stuff like, 
they have been lighting this stuff up from Jump Street, like Lucasfilm games. Like it was one day it's Indiana Jones, second day it's Ubisoft Star Wars. Like this is stuff has been in play for a while. Yeah, it doesn't happen Bethesda overnight. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, here, reading from Xbox era, I I, I googled of when Phil Spencer ta- spoke about exclusivity because of Bethesda. He said, "quote I don't want to flip about that. This this deal was was not." done to to take games away from another player base like that nowhere in this documentation that we put together was how do we keep other players from 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 playing these these games we want more people to be able to to uh, play games not fewer people to be able to to go play games but but i'll also say in in the model i'm just answering directly the question that you had and then he can 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 continues on so do i think this this is going to be exclusive no is this specifically in regards to the bethesda acquisition or because like so that was back from uh, like what was like November, or November or something like that. Yeah. Yes, but I but I just remember him being adamant on saying like we're not going to take games away from other other players. Do do I think that there's going to be Xbox ex- exclusivity for some Bethesda games? Yes. Do I think really big titles like like the the next Elder Scrolls, Star Starfield? I don't know why I almost called it Starseed, but Sky- it's but it's Skyrim two. Yep. Yeah, uh, I I highly <laughs> doubt that Indiana Jones is going to be an exclusive. Also, do you think Lucasfilm would allow them to make it an exclusive? I, I, I absolutely like, think so. But if um, they're going for quality over but just, money. But uh, just going back to that article, like the way I I took it as, and it's kind of the way that they've done Minecraft. If that if that game already exists on the competitor's platform. Oh, then, then they'll it. they'll go in and support it, but is I is like as far as going, um, moving forward, I I can absolutely see those going exclusive, but um, just to move on to the next story, um, also Xbox related, uh, Nintendo laughs at Xbox, and this uh, this happened a while ago, but a story came out that Microsoft had once tried to make a bid or acquisition for Nintendo, uh, which resulted in uh, Nintendo laughing. I get quotes, uh, laughing their asses off at them for an entire hour. And uh, apparently they also tried to do the same with Electronic Arts, who uh, gave them a respectful no thank you. But uh, I guess kudos to Microsoft for trying, but uh, Nintendo has no has no fucking chill. Kind of sounds like they're trying. They're trying to be Disney to me. <laughs> well, that, that was gobbling up companies. We're trying to gobble up companies. Well, I. From like Microsoft company history, that is what they do. They have a serious yeah. war chest, like serious war chest. Like I've seen them spend two billion dollars on tech and software and services that most people haven't even heard of. But mm-hmm. it's key for what they're they're trying to do. Like they, if they, if Nintendo or EA were like had made inklings or, or had indicated interest, they could make a swing at it. Like buying bethesda they they ponied up eight what something like eight billion for bethesda right uh, 7.5 yeah yeah Netflix. more than the star wars acquisition yes <laughs> more than more than the star wars more than the mar more than the marvel <laughs> and they are happy to do that they spent two billion on minecraft alone and it paid off for them <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> like they don't they didn't spend seven and a half billion dollars to not make more money <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what i mean no so yeah I think, but oh man bad idea <laughs> isn't there isn't there a law in japan where a foreign entity can't buy a um can't buy outright buy like a japanese business like they can ex- uh, the japanese can expand uh, yeah. to be international but they can't be like outright bought i'm pretty sure microsoft japan or some indication or some version of it would would handle that part if that was yeah. a real thing okay. um huh. but yeah, i mean it, this 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 kind of doesn't come out of the blue because i because i remember learning that nintendo was it that nintendo almost worked with microsoft on the gamecube or was it sony that they almost it was the with original the playstation and nintendo okay mm-hmm. i mean it I mean, I still think it's fucking dumb, and I believe that those Microsoft ex- execs deserve to get left <laughs> for an hour. I mean, like when it comes to business, it's all, it doesn't necessarily hurt to try, but uh, 
They're laughing their well, asses off. It's kind of cruel. I, I look at it this way. Nintendo took the meeting. Yeah. You know what the meeting's for. So, like, that, and that, that's all fine and dandy. It sounded like it was, like, not really a major thing, considering, like, I mean, that was also, like, almost 20 years ago. But, like, they were pretty... Hand, not they work as hand in hand as competitors in the video game industry do to some degree mm-hmm. so it's a fun little tidbit and it also kind of shows like kind of the surprising behavior well, not surprising behavior that's how microsoft acquires companies they'll roll in roll like six seven execs deep they're like hey we're microsoft here's billions of dollars and most of the time they get what they want so do you it's think, a fun little clapback. Do you think Bill Gates just wakes up in the morning and looks at his wife and he says, I have billions of dollars? Yeah. I think I, I think he thinks about it. <laughs> <laughs> thinks just about wakes it. up with a big ass smile on his face like, yeah. <laughs> I have billions of dollars. It's me. Bronson, do, do you have a PS5 by any chance? I do, yes. How? What do you think of the DualSense controller? I don't hate it. I like some of the features for it. Um, it's bulky, more bulky than I expected. It um, does feel it does weigh a lot more than a regular Xbox controller. Actually, I have both of them in front. Uh, mm-hmm. Dual sense significantly weightier than yeah. a regular Xbox One controller. Um, the reason I bring it up is that there was a survey that Microsoft recently sent to uh, new Xbox Series X. Um, users asking them like what do they think of the general experience does it feel next gen or the graphics what you're expecting uh but they had one part specifically asking what um that what the xbox series x users thought about the dual sense uh their direct competitor what they thought of the features and i think that's interesting because i really want xbox to just straight up uh copy make their own version of the dual sense because those features for very specific games have been um they've just they've just been wonderful to experience like i think the definitive way to play uh call of duty black ops is with a dual sense like it trust me it, mm-hmm. it plays so much better with a mouse but like yeah. if you're just playing campaign uh having the vibration having the triggers um mm-hmm. it's it's just so much more immersive and then you play something like astrobot which is like so custom tailored to that like yes yeah. it's a tech demo or whatever but i think i can i can also confirm that uh godfall uses haptic feedback and and triggers and it's the most insane use in like a, a melee specific title that i've ever felt like it literally makes you feel like you are holding on to those giant weapons mm-hmm. and swords and like swinging them and you feel the haptic trigger get harder to press the the like heavier that your combat chain is because you're holding a giant axe it's going to get heavier mm-hmm. the more that you swing it and it's it, it just it, it blew my mind when i was playing it yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that Microsoft just says, yeah, fuck it. Let's just do our own version of it because I want because uh, even when we were speculating back in was it October when we first started the show, um, we said like, yeah, the, the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers are going to be a really nice feature to have. But we don't expect most non first party mm-hmm. games like third party games like the the um, mm-hmm. the support of it is going to be so non-existent because why would they put in the extra efforts? I would kind of fight against that because they put in way too much effort in Cold and Cold War. I, I would say those are more like exceptions to the rule. Like they put so much effort into the way that Cold War does it that I'm starting to think back on that and be like, I don't know. I kind of think it's going to be fucking sweet when I, like more games start using this. I, I would hope they do. But um, so so you're you're kind of more ambivalent on, on those features, Bronson, or, or what games have you tried them with? Um... I mostly played Astrobot, which put the features in, which I thought was very nice. I my favorite implementation is Miles with the triggers. I didn't of, notice like, it that much. In there. It's subtle because a lot of this stuff, a lot of it with these new features and tech demos, they just throw it right in your face, and I'm like, all right, cool, I get it. But that one is like, oh, it's a little resistance, not a lot. It's like, oh, this is different. Yeah, it's a little bit like just right at the end as you're swinging. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sackboy does it the same way like it uses the the haptic vibration really really well but but the triggers is super subtle depends on what you're like when you're either dragging something out to like jump on it Mm -hmm. or when when you're like throwing one of the like the kind of different weapons that you can get it's super super subtle but you can still feel it Mm -hmm. 
Um, this piece of news actually made me... I usually don't get hyped for things, but uh, Square Enix has filed trademarks for Ever Crisis, the first soldier, and uh, the Shinra Electric Power Company, lo the, the logo for it, back in December, which, if you're familiar with the Horror Final Crisis Fantasy VII Horror compilation... <laughs> Uh, with Ever Crisis uh, bearing a similarity to the 2004 mobile game Before Crisis, and the First Soldier being a reference to Sephiroth, and then obviously Shinra Electric Company, that's just straight up fucking Shinra from Final Fantasy VII. They're a utility company, I don't see any issue. <laughs> they're, they're, completely, they're a completely benevolent company, they've, they've done no wrong, hail Shinra. Yep. Um, <laughs> just it's, and it's, it's so hard, because I'm not going to say anything about the Final Fantasy VII remake here, but if they, honest to God, don't port Crisis Core, then what the fuck are are are, are they doing? Like I don't. I I would rather they remake Crisis Core than just straight up, um, I guess, port or remaster because it, it's a, it's a pretty good game. But I, there's there's a lot of improvement they could do on it. How well, old is that game? Is How old is that game do... now? Oh, it's like God. 2005 or six. Then don't do it. Was it. On the, it was on the PSP. <laughs> You either you either redo it or you put portions of it in FF7 remake and you call I, it I square. think I think if they slap like the story and then put in some more interesting levels, like just within the framework of what was what's already there in the Final Fantasy VII remake, mm -hmm. like for Final Fantasy VII remakes combat system, I think it would be fine. Yeah, I mean the the only reason I would see them being able to port it fine is they were able to port Birth Birth by Sleep fine. Because I mm -hmm. think Birth, Birth by Sleep still still ran great when they ported it to a console. Actually, that's the literal. When I tell people when they start playing playing Kingdom Hearts and they're like, "Oh, well, I have a I have a PSP. I can dig up and play Birth Birth by Sleep." And I go, "No, just play the fucking PlayStation Four port. It it is literally the best way to to play that game. That's the only reason why I'm fine with if they just decide to port it, just because they ported yeah. PS PSP games in the past and it turned out great." Yeah, w without spoilers, I think it's very significant that uh, that they're pointing towards uh, Crisis Core. It, yeah. They're very vital. <laughs> In incredibly, incredibly vital that they're finally where, now doing something. Where Where's the re uh, trademark for uh, Dirge of Cerberus, the best game in the entire compilation, though? Okay, but you joke, I will lose my shit. If that, uh, I, I am only semi joking because I played the shit out of that game fucking so did growing I. up, and I and I, I and I loved it. You, it you was, can judge me now, Bronson, if you haven't up to this point. Cool. I judge everyone silently, so don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I regard people for for for, for future use. <laughs> Oh god. Um we touched upon it a little bit earlier, but uh Ubisoft is making a new open world Star Wars game. Mm -hmm. They didn't really go into too many details aside that they're, it's Ubisoft uh, Massive, the studio behind the division too that's gonna uh, be working on it. Hiring writers for it. Uh one of the writers at that studio just posted a uh, job app on a Twitter yesterday. Specifically I'm saying come and help write the new Star Wars game. I'm just excited that there's going to be Star Wars games coming from at basically anyone that's not EA. Yeah. Like, I, I think Battlefront 2 is in a good place now. Fallen uh, Order was a great yeah, thing. Fallen, Fallen Order was was really, really great. It wasn't my I, thing. I found it fun. It wasn't my thing. But mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 it's nice that Disney's finally just being like, go for it. <laughs> I, I just want more creativity with that universe like star wars doesn't just have to be let's go shoot dudes or, or stuff like swinging that. lightsabers like, mm -hmm. like it's a whole freaking universe you, you can do anything with it yeah so like two um, things on that i i have a suspicion fallen order is the only reason ea could still make the like still has a license because that stuff did not go can, off i can see that well. uh fallen order did did them justice yeah fallen order like Respawn literally saved EA twice in one year with Apex and Fallen and, and Jedi <laughs> Fallen Order. So they're they're the they they can call the shots. And you say that about like, oh, I hope like there's other Star Wars games that aren't just about shooting dudes and whatnot, right? Um these are the people that made the division two. <laughs> I I understand I mean, that. Yeah, I mean personally, I played both of the Division games, I put a good amount of hours in mm -hmm. both of them. Division 2 was two. a 
was a far better game than Division One, in my honest mm-hmm. op- opinion. They took what they learned from from the first game and like super pushed it towards Division Two. And people seem to forget that Ubisoft's been working on licensed games for for a while. Ever. No, yeah. not count. Every Tom Clancy game is a licensed game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like even even the Division Rainbow Six is Break Breakpoint is, and I I know some some people were kind of iffy because I know a lot of people didn't like the the uh, Division Two, which is totally fine. There were some parts of it that I wasn't a a fan of, but I think that team can do a lot more, and giving them Star Wars I think is a really smart. Mm-hmm. I, I will say going back to like specifically um, Ubisoft Massive and the Division Two, I do not want a Star Wars game that's basically the Division Two. It's not political. I would. Ho- I would oh no. I, oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, me, not political me, whatsoever, me, dude. Me neither. I don't want them to like just do Star Wars <laughs> Division. Like no. So I, I want them to like. I would take like just a straight up. Uh, I, I know this isn't exactly what I want because I want them to like do it to experiment, but I would far prefer like an Assassin's Creed Star Wars over a Division Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, the second I saw that announcement, literally all the alarm bells in my head going off were like Mandalorian game, Mandalorian <laughs> game, Mandalorian game. And it's just like, that, that's gotta be in the works. I think if, I think it's either it's this or someone's doing it. I just, it just seems someone's like it makes too much sense. Someone's likely doing it. Yeah. You can play as a Mandalorian in Fortnite. Does that count? Hell yeah, it does. See now, God forbid we do end up getting that that Mandalorian game, and if Ubisoft, if if your if your alarm bells are right, Bronson, and Ubisoft's doing it, let me customize my Mandalorian. Let me pick a female Mandalorian. Let I me suspect like, that, I suspect it would be that like you're you're a Mandalorian. You do missions to get better armor, which you can customize. You go on raids to get that special. Is, like, that's like, Creed. <laughs> yeah. Like it, 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 fits very, it fits it fits very well in terms of the framework. Again, just spitballing on that, of course. So like especially with the newer uh, Assassin's Creed, I feel like that would actually kind of rock. Because yeah, like yeah. Ubisoft seems to know what they're doing with the newer uh, uh, Assassin's Creeds. And... I think I was talking to s- someone. I think it was uh, Darkwing over on um, mm-hmm. over on the SDGC Discord. They would brought up we shouldn't necessarily be celebrating Star Wars going from one giant corporation to another giant corporation. But like out of the two, I think Ubisoft is infinitely mm-hmm. the lesser of two evils. And they they let their developers do more creative things versus what's going to make the most money. I mean, just uh, just look at the original Watch Dogs to Watch Dogs 2, dude. Yeah. Like fucking 180. Total, total shit made that s- series so much better. All because they, they their, should do... their people probably spoke up and was like, this isn't like a serious hacking's not that serious anymore. Like hacking's like a weird like meme now. They should they should do a Mario plus Rabbids uh plus Ewoks game. Let that oh, be the does. sequel. There you go. <laughs> uh Bronson, what have you played Cyberpunk or have you been following up no. on uh, any of the news for no, it? No, I got bored of it. Uh I, I didn't buy it. The second everyone was like, oh, this thing kind of came in hot. Oh, it really came in hot. All right, right, whatever. I'll I'll... just kind of dip down. Yeah. Um, I I guess I'll get actually, no, I guess I can do it now since I've been playing it more because we did a whole big uh, roundtable discussion on everyone's thoughts. But I have been playing it more and I'm actually I'm enjoying it significantly more than the beginning. I think the game gets better. Yeah, Uh, I think. I think it's significantly better the longer you go as you get more abilities. There's nothing like super game changing, but I do appreciate the double jump. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god. The, Never has a double oh, jump in games felt more just like... <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, like a lot of the really good side quests and storytelling parts are like severely back-ended mm-hmm. um like you you can't oh, get god. you can't get to them early on because they're because they're segmented off by um but just just by levels like you're not strong enough to do them and there's still like a whole bunch of filler stuff i'm not a fan of in the later parts as well okay but i will say i finished river ward's main quest line last night oh my god like like i don't i don't want to spoil anything because i don't know have you done it I have not finished it quite. Okay, yet. all all I will say is, whenever this whole cyberpunk thing blows 
not blows over. That's like the wrong, the wrong wording. But like what when they when they get Cyberpunk to where No Man's Sky is now, I want CD Projekt to do a horror game very badly. I'm not gonna say anything else but that, but just because I want them to do something horror really bad. I will say I know the next thing they're working on is Witcher Four, but uh, hopefully they can go out and experiment and do some stuff. I demand what's his name as Carol. <laughs> damn it, the, the I not not Army Hammer. Are you talking about the voice actor or Henry Cavill? Henry Cavill. <laughs> um, I demand a skin that lets me play as Henry Cavill <laughs> with Henry Cavill's but, voice. <laughs> just to summarize my thoughts on it, like yes, it gets better as you go on. There's some really good storytelling bits, a lot of good character building. But it's still kind of hidden behind a lot of mm-hmm. filler stuff. I'm not a gigantic fan of. I'm basically agreeing um, with everything that you're saying. Yeah, uh, but I bring it up because, um, and there's even been some stuff that's happened mm-hmm. uh, just over the last 24 hours. Uh, but it's but CG Project that of the p- developer behind uh, Cyberpunk 2077 released a video kind of going over its development, like some some of its woes. The co-founder. I'm going to fuck this. Actually, no, this is probably an easier one, but I'm probably still going to fuck it up. It's uh, Marcin, man. You can do it. I have faith in you. Marcin Iwinski uh, just no. growing concerns over the multitude of factors that's plagued Cyberpunk 2077, such as, but not limited to, the overwhelming amount of bugs and glitches, the state of the last gen versions, and the crunch culture that's consumed the studio. Uh, Iwinski addressed the disparity between the PC and console versions by confirming that the studio for their base version of the game was high-end PCs. And so that makes um, I, what, what is current gen um, and the last gen, those were afterthoughts. So base game was was high-end PCs, and then they had to continually okay. downgrade from there in order to, to get it on par, which is not the way most studios do it. They build up from the base machines and then upgrade from there with... Um, graphical bells and whistles and whatnot. Um, so that's probably the foundation of uh, why there's a lot of issues going on there. Um, but they've also gone on to say that they're vowing that the studio's new top priority is to avoid crunch culture on all future projects uh, and stating that future fi- future fixes for Cyberpunk 2077 will be made without uh, obligatory overtime. How, how much they'll stick to that promise, we'll have to see. Um, and he also ends it on that the next gen update for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash S consoles won't be available until the second half of 2021. So you're going to have to wait quite a bit there, sir. I mean, first of uh, all, I'm actually kind of de- de- depressed about that because I legitimately wanted to play it using like the PS5 upgrades and, and, and stuff thinking that they were coming out in like February. So now I'm just like kind of just said. Because I'm like, I want to see this game looking really, really good, even though it does already look pretty, pretty great on PS PS fives. Um, you and I discussed this the other night. It baffles me that they chose to port the game to consoles the way that they did when they ported The Witcher Three, and for all intents and purposes, that game ran totally fine. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it had issues with like Roach appearing on like. <laughs> appearing on roofs and stuff but like it ran totally fine like i think what it what it it comes down to also it's just the individual developers they knew that the game wasn't in shape and there's mm -hmm. an article by jason try that came out i believe this was it this morning or last night it it was like last night at like 11 30 like it was like late at night yeah and um like most of the developers were under the impression that this game was not going to be coming out until 2022 which is so fucking nuts. I mean, years. you play it, you can kind of understand that. <laughs> like, there's some, like there's some shit that happens. Like, I finally got the whole be thrown into like the fucking sky the other day, and like and I was just like, like I wasn't even doing anything. I was just driving, and then my car fell through the floor, and I went whoop. I have not been experiencing as much as many glitches. Um, on the PC version as of late. It's like, there's been like some cars falling from the sky, but nothing too crazy, which, which is good. And, and it's um, like, it sucks because we also were discussing this too. Imagine being the like on the ground developers on this, where like you were so proud that you guys were going to make like one of the biggest open, open world games and just, just biggest games ever. And then you're told, Oh, we have to release it in December. And you're like, this is not even close to being done. 
Like this mm-hmm. is going to be yeah. like the magnum opus of my of my work, and it's going to be un unfinished. I think, um, or one of the things that came out in the articles that um, production managers would go around saying, like, "Don't worry, guys, we can do this. We're the team that made the fucking Witcher, Witcher 3. Three. No, we're, like, we're, okay. we're, we're tough shit." And just, yeah, just and t- bad culture going on in general over there. Um, let's see. Did you, did you have anything you want to add, Bronson, or is Cyberpunk just dead to your soul? Uh, no, this is kind of comes down to people getting high on their own supply and executives not listening to the the people, the boots on the ground, essentially. So now they're going to pay the piper and kind of have to keep going through this and patching it and whatnot. And, and we'll see. I'll play the game at some point, but it'll be a while. Same with like Witcher 3. Yeah. It took a while for me to get to there. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of people are basically in that scenario. Just like, it's not even fucking worth dealing with in this state. I'll just play it when it's actually done mm-hmm. can, and the can executives I, should have had the same mindset can i do this this uh this next one you and me are pretty damn equal fans of this series and i need to use the restroom so in this instance i will say yes <laughs> Hell i'll be yeah. right back but go ahead bronson you're with me now it's gonna be uh, great <laughs> all right so capcom recently came out so there's gonna be a resident evil not just a village showcase but a Resident Evil showcase on January 21st, which they already confirmed is going to de- debut a brand new village trailer, first ever gameplay, and supposedly other an- announcements with the official Resident Evil Twitter uh, account very recently starting to post GIFs of classic Resident Evil menu screens, hmm. which has led a lot of fans to believe that Capcom is finally going to port the original three Resident Evils to next-gen consoles, which has been something that's been hinted at, teased at for a very long time, ever since the remake of 2 came out. People had been kind of, I say kindly asking, but basically screaming at Capcom to release the original Resident Evil 2 so that players can see how it was originally. And with the release of 3 and the fact that 3 wasn't what a lot of people wanted, I personally loved 3, but I can totally understand how it cut out a lot of stuff from the original. People have once again been screaming at Capcom to release 2 and 3 on to just like port them. Port them with like better 5 polygons, I guess, because the characters are made out of like 5 giant polygons Mm. back then. But um, yeah, uh, originally people thought it was never going to happen, but with Capcom recently teasing those old school GIFs, and the people have noticed that the menu screens in the GIFs look incredibly high res, not like the original menu screens were. So people are like 99% sure that we're getting more game announcements other than just Village, and also. Capcom put out a tweet saying that members of the Resident Evil Ambassadors Club, which is basically the Resident Evil official fan fan club, can sign up for a unannounced beta for something that's supposedly going to be announced at the Resident Evil showcase. Um, for those who remember, Resident Evil Resistance came out with Resident Evil 3, and Capcom did run a beta for that. So people are pretty sure we're just getting whatever the next sequel to re- re- Resistance is. But um, I am a ambassador, so I was able to look at the uh, look at the page to sign up, and it's supposedly a beta of a mode that's going to consist of four to six players. I'm really hoping for something uh, along the lines of Outbreak and not in the same arcadey sense as Resistance. I'm um, kind of very middling on that, but but to go back to the. Uh, ports while i was away um I, those aren't necessarily something that i'm super actively interested in playing myself but i think in terms of preservation yeah. from a historical point of view they should absolutely make those playable because the only place you can really play those on now uh, is if you have a ps3 you download it from the store if you have a vita um, or if you somehow have the uh gamecube ports that came out like 20 plus years ago as i do that is that, <laughs> Those aren't even like full on game. Is they just like maybe up res it a little bit? No, they so for the for the Resident Evil Three one, which I remember the most because that's how I played Resident Evil Three. They like added like an easy to it, where when you start off the game and you get to the first item box, there's a machine gun and a grenade launcher in the item box. If I remember, okay. So it technically makes Resident Evil Three a bit easier, 
but I don't remember two because it's been a while since I played the GameCube port of two. Have we talked about the tall lady yet? Oh God, Twitter's already for the tall lady. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you've seen the tall lady, Bruns. <laughs> I have, and people need to kind of calm the hell down. Twitter, uh, the the Resident <laughs> Evil account, the official Res, Res, Resident Evil account, acknowledged the tall lady today with like with like one of those thought thought bubble tweets. For all of a sudden, the thought bubble was tall lady. <laughs> so I, they, um, they knew what they what the, they what they, they knew they knew, what they, they were they looking knew. for there. Yeah, <laughs> they knew they knew that Twitter was going to be horny for the tall lady. <laughs> Um, I think in terms of what I'm like super excited for from the showcase is like obviously Resident Evil mm-hmm. 8. I want more details on that. Um, I'm, I'm, I, th- I think I mentioned it last time. I'm excited for Resident Evil to like kind of maybe go back and forth between third and first person perspectives just because just at face value that keeps things fresh. Um, I think s- the direction that Seven took is probably s- more in the traditional survival horror than, than the two and three remakes were where it's a bit a little bit more on the action side mm-hmm. would, i would um, argue that two was a lot more survival horror than three was oh no i i, I infinitely agree on that yeah because like, i just felt, felt like resident seven evil was 3, like especially resident evil three was always seen more as the more actiony resident evil because it was the first one that introduced the the uh, dodge mechanic and mm-hmm. it introduced the uh the real-time choice system which which during certain scenes that uh your your screen would uh pause and you would get two different options like oh maybe, yeah i absolutely maybe agree one on that front. was run from nemesis and the other was fight him and that was the first resident evil game to actually do that so i would argue that two is the more survival horror three is more definitely the more action one and i'm at least glad that the remakes leaned more towards that Oh yeah, I absolutely agree on that. It's it's just more so that while L three is is undoubtedly more action than two, I would still say that two is more action than seven. And just and just going back to yeah, uh, the things I'm excited for is so it'd be obviously Resident Evil eight. Um, the the ports, while I'm not personally excited for them, I, I am I would be very happy for those to be readily available. Um, Resident Evil four is basically a uh it's a badly kept secret that that the remake is coming and i think someone was talking to me about it earlier or i I think i posted like the article version of the first like game design video i had done i was kind of reading through i'm just like oh wow i actually still like something i made like a year ago that's that's that is fucking surprising as shit but then uh someone brought up like oh yeah i like how you how you highlighted the uh why the tank controls are so central to resident evil 4's uh game design why uh you're why your mobility is limited, why, how that plays into your actions and why enemies in the level design are made uh, t- or tailor made specifically to account for that. So what's interesting for me for Resident Evil 4 as my favorite game of all time, I, I'm interested to see and it, I, I do not think they're going to go with tank controls for the Resident Evil 4 remake. No way in fucking hell they're going to do that. So I'm interested to see how they change the rest of the variables to not compensate to to line things back up while we know again worst kept secret that the resident Evil 4 remake is happening i wouldn't expect to see it at this showcase and i'm saying that I, I'm, I'm just I, overly I, hopeful I, I i'm i'm gonna step very lightly around this uh i don't believe we're going to see it just strictly because that would 100 percent take away from resident Evil 8 if they mm-hmm. come out of the woodwork and fully announce the Resident Evil 4 remake, get, give us like a, a, a short teaser trailer or, or something that would 100% take away from whatever else that they show. And, and that's also a lot, a lot for one present. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, I still think it could happen, which would be fucking awesome with the shit that has leaked from the 4 remake. I would be baffled if they don't at least like acknowledge that it's happening. But, um, well- for them. Well, I think you know me. I think you know me. I'm not like generally like a hype person. I don't like I don't like trailers. I I just want to play the things or watch the things whenever they come out. This is this one game very specifically is the one thing I'm yeah. like, oh fuck yeah. No. I need and it. it's like again, I can see them at least like acknowledging that it exists. Kind of like how they announced that they were doing the Resident Evil 2 remake back back in the day with the whole like we we do it sure or like whatever the hell it said. I see them acknowledging the fact that that they're doing it. Maybe show like a show like an updated logo, 
but for them to just flat out like show a full trailer it would 100 percent take away from resident evil 8 so i don't think we're gonna go full on as like we're going to see a trailer acknowledging it maybe that seems more likely to me than like capcom just like saying here's resident evil 8 here's another resident evil game here's the ports of the original here's here's resident evil 4 like i don't see that happening yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Bronson, do you, are you are you a fan of Resident Evil? Any strong history with it? I whatsoever? have never played one. My I, God, I actively avoid those games. Are, are you Why? not a big horror person? I am or? a coward. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might be able to handle Resident Evil two and three, the like r- recent ones. Like, yeah, they have like scary moments to them, but honestly, I think you'd be able to handle those completely fine. Seven. I don't know. Yeah. Seven, play, play with the bright play with the brightness turned up and don't play with headphones and keep the volume very low. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. actually, if they do end up porting the original uh one, two, and three, those would actually be great jumping jumping on points. They aren't scary anymore. Like they're they're so old and characters are made of like I'll be the judge age. of that. <laughs> but it's like honestly though, if you do want to attempt to get into it, those those would be great jumping jumping on points. So I oh. so I hope that they announce those for your sake. Let's see. We have some smaller Plus stories I hope might as well. That they totally shadow drop them. Where like they just go like, okay, oh, hey, they're out like now. Like, I figured like, that, all that's, probably what, that's probably what they would do for something that like of that so level. Cool. That okay, cool. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a Hill Mary here. Bronson, what do you think about Pokemon? Oh hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell what do you yeah. think about Pokemon Snap? Oh hell yeah. What do you think about Pokemon Snap 2 getting a release in April? That is a lot sooner than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like way further off. I but... figured twenty twenty two. I'm excited for it. Like the first game was, uh, it was a pretty big part of my childhood. So I think just even purely out of nostalgia, like whether the game's good or not, I'm, I'm probably gonna have a good time with it either way. Yep. Same. I did not have a Nintendo 64 as a child. I was a PlayStation child, so I can say nothing about Pokemon Snap. I've never played it. I think you're in for a joyride. I don't know if I'm going to get it. I'm more into the mainline RPG. Pokemon, so I don't. Plus, plus it's sixty fucking dollars. Like, come on. Have they actually? You no, know, it's a Nintendo. Of course, it's going to be. It's a Nintendo first party game. Sixty dollars. I don't, don't know if care. I, I don't know if I can pay sixty f- for that. I don't. So, so are you going to pay sixty for it, Bronson? Fuck yeah. I, I'm with Bronson on this one. I regret I literally so, nothing. <laughs> Uh, how about that? How about Twitter won't shut up about an apparent Diamond and Pearl remake? I think Twitter the Pokemon fan the base is it. so fucking toxic. Like, I don't, I don't even want to. I don't even remember like all the key details of it. But do, were you guys around when all the Pokemon Sword and Shield shit was going yes. on? Like, people complaining about like the lack of older Pokemon or the graphics. I'm just like, how there was the how there was that out. one tree that looked really bad, and I was like, can you shut the fuck up? I, like, I think if you're looking for graphical fidelity, Pokemon's probably the wrong place yeah, to go for. And it's like, um, so for those who don't know, uh, uh, an apparent Pokemon leaker who's been right in the past went on Twitter recently and flat out confirmed that a Diamond and Pearl remake is happening. And he, he didn't say if it's in the style of, of Pokemon um, Let's Go or if it's like a flat out like 3D remake of it. In like in like a sword and shield style, but apparently this guy's been right in the past. He flat out said it it, it is happening and it's happening this year. And Twitter blew up because I guess people have been wanting this forever. Diamond and Pearl are my favorite gen. I grew up on Diamond. I had over like five hundred hours in it. Like it's it is one of my favorite games of all time. But it's like the fact that, and I'm not being rude to Pokemon fans. That's not why I'm here. I am a Pokemon fan also, but they fucking just lost it. Like, people are going on what one dude said, who's been, like, right in the past, like, once or twice, and they're and they're like, I, oh my god, oh my god, it's like... I think, um, 
I think the remake was a was was just eventual. They'd done a remake for one, for two, for three. Three's the best generation. Um, well, like let's let's go was also a very good Pokemon game, and people seem. Mm-hmm. I think it was a great on jumping that. on point for people that, um, like uh, even for people that were familiar with the franchise. I think it was a nice little welcome addition. Yeah, and, and it was a remake of Pokemon Yellow. Like, come on, like it's. It was it, it it was very good, and if God forbid this Diamond and Pearl remake thing ends up being true, I kind of hope it's in the Let's Go style, because that would be a lot of fun instead of just them like being forced to just remake the entirety of Diamond and Pearl in like Sword Sword, Sword and Shield style, yeah. when Sword and Shield is the best Pokemon game that they've done in recent memory. <laughs> okay, I might Pokemon. Think- okay, like up until like generation three, I knew like every single Pokemon, what their types were and everything. Oh, so I'm going to create oh, a little nothing. mental. T- t- I'm going to make like a little mental tier list of generations. Actually, you know what? Br- Bronson, go ahead and give your thoughts on Pokemon while you look up the timeline because I, I don't remember the fucking titles like past. Okay, perfect. Five. Yep, you, you give me an open mic about Pokemon. Lovely. One, there's too many of them. <laughs> None of this matters. There's like there's 80 billion many. of them. It's okay to get rid of some. It's totally fine. Number two, it was really cool to put uh, sunglasses on my Eevee and have him <laughs> just explode stuff and be like, let's go. Yeah, That's perfectly fucking... fine. Love it. Love it. It's, ex- it's excellent. I have I had a ton of fun with with Shield. There's oh, no wait. issues there. Like, I have fun with those games, and I don't engage with the fan base anymore. I play games with my friends who like Pokemon, and that's about it. Anyone else... Wow. I- <laughs> There's because okay. I have concerns. Oh, nice! That looks cool. I uh, for for audio listeners, Sarah's holding up a Pikachu. Uh, sorry, yeah, Pikachu uh, Switch uh, dock this, and console. This was the Let's Go EV Pikachu Switch that they nice. gave out. With I like Let's Go. Let's Go is a very fun game. Allow me to use that stupid Pokeball controller more, please. I think um, I paid building it off because what... it came with the stupid switch. <laughs> <laughs> I think building off of what Bronson had said, like when I play Pokemon, I mainly play it solo. Like I might have like a personal uh, close friend or two, like I'll trade stuff with or battle, but I don't take it very seriously. Yeah, I don't. Um, I, I had a coworker at one of my older jobs where he's just like super obsessive. He's always talking about like catching shinies like every day. I'm just like, dude, I just don't fucking give a shit. Mm-hmm. I just want to play the game. I want to get the badges. I don't even necessarily care about like completing the Pokedex. Like I'll try to like do what I can, but I'm not going to walk around for a 0.001% chance of getting a shiny fucking bag on or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. The um, most, the most I'll do is I will do the end game stuff, which I think sword and shield has great end game content, which is like catching the rare. Those dudes have weird hair. Cover. Yeah. Especially cause they're adding fucking DLC to it, which I think is a very smart idea. Cause I fucking bought that season pass. Of course I goddamn did. And I think that's what I think it, it, the whole catching everything and the whole shiny hunting and the people who tape who like tape rubber bands onto their switch for them to like run in circles to hatch shit. I just think that's too much. I think you guys need to, I don't know, go outside. <laughs> go outside. No, it's just, it's, I mean, it's, I have friends who do it and it's great and I'm here for it, but I'm just like, why do you need to put a rubber band on your switch? Let's see. Well, I've got went ahead and put together a little list of my generations from top to bottom. And I haven't played uh, some of the later ones in quite some time. And I never beat Sun and Moon. So take that for as you will. You never beat Sun and Moon? Sun and Moon was crazy. Dude, my, my co-worker was so fucking annoying about it. Like, it killed my drive to play. It's like... Imagine what, what's your favorite uh, band? Uh, sir? D- d- tool. <laughs> okay, n- imagine you have a coworker who really likes Tool, and that's the only yeah. thing they talk to you about that for forty kind of hours a week. Tool, tool fans are pretentious white dudes, so yeah, that that can get that get kind of annoying. Yeah, it's basically that, like just by. Just, just, but just by that, it's like, yeah, my love for Pokemon. I mean, I definitely <laughs> think that if you do end up getting. Like, if you do end up getting, I mean, I yeah, still, I would honestly I say it. try to go back when if, if if you ever get the like feeling to. Sun and Moon was very underrated to me. 
Sun and Moon was a lot of fun, and it had great like different for like gyms, like 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 they weren't exactly gyms; they were like island challenges. And I just found it a lot mm-hmm. of fun. I did like that part. Uh, let's see. So so for my ranking, I, I would put three at top because I think it's probably the most balanced. Like yeah, there's too much water, or whatever. But I really like all the Pokemon you can get in there. Uh, five, which is black and white. I would maybe even put above three spe- oh, for one very specific one. reason. <laughs> is it? No, it's the good one because you can't get any of the older Pokemon until the end game. So I like the aspect of you going through it. Like everything's fresh. There's no fucking Zubats. You don't know it's fucking flying poison. You have to figure all this shit out as you go. Black, and, black and white um, had like for someone who played like, like all four generations. Legendaries. They were so boring. I was, it was, it was so about boring. the journey. It was so dumb. And then they fucking released black What's... too and white too. And it's like, I'm sorry. I, I never I. played those ones. Um, so let's see after, after five, it'd be eight, which is, um, which is sword and shield. There's a lot of quality life improvements, just a solid game. Then two, then one, four. It would be after that. I, one, one very specific reason that the original versions of Diamond and Pearl had extremely slow tech speed. So it, it was just like artificially long because of that. You couldn't skip past it. Uh, six, I don't. That, what, that's, that's X and Y. It was okay. It was kind of by the numbers, kind of more relying on nostalgia than anything. And then seven, I never finished. So I can't really give it uh, a proper For me, spot. it's just Diamond, Diamond and Pearl. Like one, one hundred percent. Like those are the ones I have the most memory of, and like I can pretty much remember my original team pretty much close to, close to perfectly. Um, and I just, it, it, I, I don't remember all of them because I know I've played all of them. It's just been forever. But Sword and Shield are are honestly after Diamond and Pearl, not just because of the new Pokemon that it brought up, but the fact that it was such like a different like region like yeah it was meant to be great it was like meant to be europe but like it, it just was so bright and so colorful and just so much fun and like all of the gym leaders were just fun people and the champion i feel bad i can't remember his name but he just was a fucking blast like everybody was just new and different and i like when pokemon does does that just like throws you to the wolves bad bad joke because the legendaries are dogs <laughs> i hate you for that but it, it, it's like I, I like when pokemon plus it had more customization options like i totally forgot that like it had the best customization options in like any pokemon game which i want more of also there 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 are karate bears there are karate bears <laughs> uh what about you bronson any particular taste one way or the other in terms of like the no, mainline honestly, games? honestly, just like, oh, that came out. I'm going to play it. Like the Pokemon game, I know I want it. I, yeah. I know I'm going to have I know I'm going to have a good time playing it, which is the the key for for me. Yeah, I feel I feel like Pokemon is one of the only right. series where whenever a new like mainline Pokemon game is announced, I instantly care. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just like, oh, it's Pokemon. It's it's RPG I, I, Pokemon. I like Pokemon games because they're they're like not like shooty, gory graphic shit. It's cute and it's adorable. It's Pokemon. <laughs> I think it's also just mm-hmm. you know what you're getting into. There, there's a certain bar of quality. It's at least going to meet. It's I, I don't want to say comfort food because I feel like that's almost mm-hmm. like a slight against it. But it's it's a nice welcoming experience that I've literally had since I was a kid. So I deeply appreciate it on that front. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and cut off the news for now and just go ahead and move on over to what we've been playing you want to go ahead and sure. do the honors bronson um, couple things so i've been getting back in the war zone with my friend cj kind of playing that from time to time that is oh sh- I-, I didn't know you were playing it's, warzone. Like, it's one more thing to pass the time if that makes sense like it's more less about the game and more the person for me it's like okay, cool. Right. Hey, it's my hey, it's my buddy. You want to play stuff? Cool. You want to play? You play this? All right, that's fine. <laughs> um. Well, hey, if, if you need yeah. a semi decent person, do not call me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I will then, do nothing to contribute. <laughs> and then what's another 
one. Um, I think he. I think you're constantly yeah. playing Among Believe Us. Believe it or so not, not that. as much nowadays. I'm kind of holding off on that for a little bit, just because. For the yeah, for the for new, the map, new map, map and right? like the, just you know, you don't want to have everything be so samey. So it's good. Mm. To, it's good to mix it up a little bit. So. I think you can mix it up. Um, I I know you're probably like in a bunch of different Among Us communities, but I think specifically playing with different yeah. people can help out nah, a lot that's definitely too true i'm only in one the game night one is the only one that i really like heavily am in which i kind of prefer but also you know everyone kind of will suss me out for any reason whatsoever <laughs> now so it's just like all right that works i guess <laughs> um yeah if you jump in a new server no one knows who you are they don't oh uh, that know doesn't always work very tricks. well because i usually do something yeah. very evil very quickly and then get in trouble for it. <laughs> um, some other ones I was trying to work through my backlog. I just started a new job, so it's kind of on the wayside a little bit. Um, I played through I Am Dead, which is um, kind of the best way to put it. It's kind of a puzzle adventure game. Basically, you're. Oh, is that the one where where you're a ghost and it's like an Anna? It's an Anna Annapurna game. Yes, it's the Annapurna oh, game. Oh, I wanted to play that. It, I enjoyed it very much. Um, that was interesting to me because, you know, Annapurna, their thing is quality. And a big thing for me when it comes to, like, games with a lot of text and whatnot is full voice acting. I want it. That's what I kind of prefer. Like, there's visual novels that I won't play. Like, I haven't played Disco Elysium yet specifically because... Yeah, not enough force acting in it, and I know it's a very, it's a very text heavy game. And then there's, so you more of a dubs I versus like subs having, kind of guy. I like having some more emotion in it. Like for example, the visual novel Eliza is one of my favorite games of like the last couple of years, and that just comes down to how strong the story is, and voice acting is a part of that. So, yeah, I will. I will also jump in on the Anna Perna screen because I go to a uh, day of the day of the devs every every year, and mm -hmm. Anna Perna always has their own like room, like they have their own room where they're showing off like all of the indie games that they're that they're currently backing. And some of my favorite games I've played at Day of the Devs, not counting that one time I got to play Kingdom Hearts three a year a year early. But mm -hmm. like pretty much every game I played at a Day of the Devs that was an Anna Perna title. I've loved everything. Like Annapurna also has has this thing where they support indie games to the point where they're just like, we're just going to give you the money to like pu publish it. They're yeah. like, we're just going to support you financially. You can do whatever, whatever you want. That's it. And I think we need more companies like them. Yes, I agree. Because they they will let you kind of, for better or worse, make what you want to make. And like mm -hmm. we're coming back to to I am dead. The story part of it was more interesting to me than the actual gameplay part. The gameplay part was kind of go through this environment. wasn't really point and click. It was more of a spin on it. Um, this is basically your your ghost power is you can hone in on objects. And by hone in, I mean you get down to like specific molecules of it. And like you would focus on like objects of importance for someone you're looking for. And that's the kind of way that you would find people. And that was interesting for me just in terms of, you know, like how 2020 was for everybody when I was kind of very therapeutic in that regard. Like, okay, we're talking about people passing on the afterlife, kind of those kind of things. We're not doing it in like a brutal, brutal manner. It's like, Hey, this is kind of how it is. So that was interesting to me. And then I just got a new phone. So I'm sure to kind of go through the, my usual phone games that I will try and start and then never finish <laughs> like old, old man's journey, like those kind of ones, part-time UFO all that jazz. So that's what I got so far for games. Let's see. You and me have also been playing a little bit of, uh, uh yes, we, played, like, we did what, play Scott Pilgrim. Two, yes, uh, Scott Pilgrim. I think we already touched on a little bit earlier, but I think like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a fun, nice little beat em up. Beat em ups aren't necessarily something I'm enthusiastic about nowadays. So much as when I was a kid playing them in an arcade, you know, they're just designed mm -hmm, to eat mm -hmm. your quarters. 
I think even on normal, it's probably a little bit harder than it really needs to. There's no real way to like break enemies' blocks, which can get a little annoying. But when it comes to just playing with a whole bunch of friends and tossing bottles and uh, shovels and other enemies at each other's heads and doing friendly oh, yeah. fire, I think it's a pretty good time. I need, I need the bottle. I need it. Um, <laughs> I, no, no, I got pretty true. good at catching them until you yep. start tossing the back that, of my that's head. That's how it works. You, 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 you figured something <laughs> else out, so I just made it better. Um, that game has serious grind <laughs> issues in that you need to keep farming money to get better until you eventually beat the game, which kind of sours me on it somewhat. But as a group experience, group co-op experience, it's excellent. And like gameplay's fun. The soundtrack kind of elevates everything, in my opinion. I'm just very pleased that someone who Anamanaguchi is the band that does the soundtrack. I love that band. I've seen them live in Philly so at some I. awful dive they bar. Kicked. See, I saw them live with <laughs> I saw them live with fucking Hatsune Miku like four fucking years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and they kicked ass. Like they're mm-hmm. they're some of the most fun seeing them live and seeing how they do their mu- music, how they use guitars to do their music, which you would never guess that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, they're like they're like a blast they're the only reason i've been wanting to like pick that game up again because i had it way back when it came out on on 360 like that's how long ago that i've had it and i was thinking of picking it up again just because i remember it being a lot of fun and the soundtrack kicking a lot of butt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's interesting to me saying like okay like i backed automatic you just kickstarter and it took them years to finish it so I know that they're kind of free spirits is how we'll, we'll we'll go with it. It's great to me seeing like the reverence that people have for the soundtrack over the re-release. They did Ubi the Twitch stream with Adam Monaguchi doing like not a live concert, but like they did a concert over Zoom or like they kind of did a, a more remote con- con- concert while going through like the levels of the game like they played another winter when players were going through the first level that kind of thing and seeing like oh hey the Su- scott pilgrim soundtrack has a colored vinyl now scott pilgrim has a 200 dollar special ko version with a panorama that plays music that stuff's great for me just because it's like oh hey it means that mm-hmm. you know this band that i like has is getting the reverence that i think that they would deserve for the work that they did, even if it took forever. I think in a lot of ways, at least to me, is that I think my favorite parts about the game are everything that aren't necessarily the game. Like like you said, it's absolutely the music, it's the aesthetic, it's the um, animation. Like that's, that's kind of the stuff like immediately jumps out to me. And I... I want to say nostalgia for like even the original release, but that, that that's what stands out to me. At least that's what mm-hmm. makes it memorable. Not so much the yeah. beat em up nature of it. So when are you going to pick it up, Sarah? We need more people. We, we couldn't play with Dio because of the, uh, the servers were acting a little I wonky have to for beat him. Cyberpunk. I told myself I can't play anything else to beat cyberpunk, but my OCD is forcing me to play cyberpunk for longer than I wanted to. Cause I have to do everything. You know, I, I need to shout out Dio real quick because I, I already have such a giant, giant backlog. I don't want to touch anything else, but me and Dio kind of bonded a little bit over the <laughs> Mafia series because he wanted cause he was talking about playing Mafia one. I'm just like, oh, let me play it. Then I had a good time. I talked about it on length um, for a while on Twitter. I'm not sure I talked about it on here yet, but um, I'm just like, oh, yeah, let me buy Mafia 2. And Dio's like, no, don't fucking buy it. It's not a good game. It doesn't hold yeah, up. He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, uh, but now, but now Dio has proven he's the kindest soul on, on the planet because he's just constantly trying to say, like, look, just do the Steam share thing mm-hmm. with my Steam account. That way you can play it. I'm just like, it's Dio, nice. that's too kind. That, that's very generous to give your, what's yeah. basically your login information so that I can. That, 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 yeah, that's a giant okay, amount of trust. He's doing that so you will try um, Mafia 2 and then be like, oh, wow, I was he, he was right. I was, this he, sucks. He was right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's basically it, but still, just mm-hmm. like that that level of trust. Yeah. I, I love you, Dio. But I am very stubborn. I cannot even accept a glass of water 
if someone offers it to me in their house and I, if like if I'm fucking parched. Can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Very kind. Um but so let's see. That that's yep. about all you've been playing then, Bronson? Okay. Um I guess I'll go into mine since I guess I already started talking about Mafia. Because I, I don't remember if I talked about it on here. But to sum it up, it is a open world game with no site activities to do. It is just an extremely um I, I don't want to say linear because obviously there's the uh, open world, but you, so you can like mess around, just like walk around, do whatever, but there's no like actual <coughs> solid activities or anything to do like that. It's just story missions. And I think that works to the game's benefit because uh, Sarah can testify to this also with cyberpunk, uh, the pacing of narratives, whether it's the main story or specific side quests, the pacing yeah. is non-existent because there's yeah. so much shit you're doing in between. And Mafia, just like I, at face value, the story's interesting, but it's also just the pacing back to back to back. It's just like this just plays out like mm-hmm. a like a TV show. And it is such a refreshing thing to do when you're not playing like an Assassin's Creed game where it's like 100 hours and the story's so spread out. Um, so I really enjoyed it. The gameplay's, at least with a controller, not very good. Like the melee's kind of mm-hmm. broken. The, the gun plays like way too stiff, but it's a hell of an experience. Um, from what I recall from Mafia Three, at least, um, it, it the series gets better gunplay. I would have imagined that they would have fixed that for mm-hmm. the first one, but I guess not. But I would still overall highly recommend it. Uh, let's see what else have I done? Uh, I I recent not recently I guess like over the last month and a half have been playing Hell Hades yeah. just kind of on and off because I have the yeah I because I have the Switch version so I just kind of play like one run every here and there like if I go over to uh my girlfriend's house or if I'm waiting on something and uh so I recently beat it for the first time I'm not sure if I necessarily have the drive to do it an additional ten times. Like, I don't really have too much to play on my Switch mm-hmm. anyway, aside from maybe the uh, the 3D mm-hmm. Mario collection. And I'm, I'm like halfway through Sunshine. Um, but so, yeah, I guess I'll basically be my go to Switch game if I ever leave the house, which aside from work, yeah. I basically don't. So that's that's going to be on the back burner. But I think like just the core uh, gameplay and the way that you're constantly getting new boons and combinations like no one run mm-hmm. is exactly the same. Uh, keeps it really fresh and it's mm-hmm. just a good action game. I, I think like my only minor complaint would be um, because it's isometric and that the camera is pulled back. Sometimes it's hard to read an enemy's movements oh, when they're about chaos. to attack, yeah. especially. Yeah. Especially if you have a weapon where you're constantly like having a mash with like the sword or something like that. And that makes it a lot harder versus if you're using the bow, you can easily see like if someone's yeah. telegraphing yeah. that they're about to strike. But uh, I, I know you've played it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I true ended it. I, I I beat it ten times, um, and then and then did one more for fun it's ten times <laughs> to cap it off. The game, I anyone who's like played a ton, a ton of Hades will tell you this: the first time you beat it is the hardest part. After that, it gets exponentially easier the more you play. It's it's very interesting. Um, it, and it really is like best in class when it comes to like the, the, the combat, it's like years and years of them honing everything that they know from Bastion to Transistor and Pyre to kind of put everything together. And that's always been like the best part of Hades for me. It's like, okay, I've liked those games. I've played those games, but Hades is different i don't like roguelike games but yeah neither do i for i just like that this is a roguelike where there is not just like combat and stuff and loot progression like you keep your levels or powers or ability to get better things but there's story progression each death matters in terms of the story to some degree it's like oh hey this character knows how I died and they're making fun of me for it. Or, hey, I killed them in my last run and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like can that I, kind of stuff. Can I just I, very quickly say, so I'm, I've am i been playing Hades. I, I don't want... I was going to say that. I'm going to make me sound like a hipster. 
I haven't played Hades since there was only like ten floors to it when they like yeah. announced it at the Game Awards. Yeah, because I have, I am in my DNA. I'm contractually obligated to buy everything that Supergiant Games does because I love everything that Supergiant Games does. Like I beat mm. Bastion multiple times. I beat Transistor once, and then I beat it again when like everything is like ten times harder. Mm-hmm. I love Pyre with all of my heart and soul. Like I adore that company. And the one thing I'm hoping that Hades does, because I know there are people who play who are playing Hades who have never played any of their older games. My only hope is that the people who play Hades who have never played any of their other work get their other work because it is constantly on sale. I... Almost, it's it's like available everywhere. Just I want people to give. Super I think I'm basically in shot with their other work, especially Pyre. No one fucking touched Pyre. Yeah, no, no, no. I got and this. Pyre I got this. Fucking Hades, intense. I love it. Hades is so good. It's gonna make Pyre not a bomb. I really well, because that's the thing. Was Pyre <laughs> wasn't bad. Just no one played it. Pyre wasn't like, bad, but it did not land. Basketball, and they're like, what? None. Yeah. I think I'm probably the perfect. Uh, test case for what you mentioned there is that um, I did play a little bit of Transistor because it was one of those early ish um, PlayStation Plus so games, but I, I never, I never, Please yeah, but I never, so I never good. stuck with it. So I think this is this is giving me an incentive to go back and, yeah, and try all those other games. I, I, I will say the only two detractions I really have from Hades is that um, I, guess, I guess one serious one, not so serious. The serious one would be. Um, I was probably a little bit let down by the talk about the story. I feel like it's a little bit more ch- uh, like character charm versus overall narrative, but that can just be down to different tastes. And it's a very postmodern take on story where, you know, it is, it's not a linear thing. It's like this, it's, it's very re- reliant on the fact that it is a roguelike and that's interesting within its own rights. And then the, I guess not so serious detraction would be uh, there was a lot of talk as the game was coming out, everyone's like, "Oh my god, all the characters they, in this game they are really are hot. though." Like, um, like fucking Zagreus. I, I disagree. <laughs> I mean, Zagreus is, but like everyone else, I'm just like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't think the the amount of praise it got for maximum holiness was necessarily oh, all there. So the narrative part that you're talking about, it honestly starts after you beat the game for the first time, that's when you're going to see like the main narrative start okay. popping up. Like each time you finish a run, there's extra pieces going on there. So there's extra there. I ran into that issue too, because it took me longer to beat Hades than other people. So I was like, what the hell? What the hell? This seems the same. Nothing. The story isn't advancing. I thought it was blah, blah, blah. And then I beat it. I was like, Oh man, I did it. Cool. I can stop playing the game now. Right. Cause like, my thought process is, oh, you beat a roguelike, you're done with it. Like, I beat FTL. Cool. Done. Right? And then they're like, nah, you gotta keep going. I'm like, but that was really hard. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I feel less incentivized to do the extra, I guess, like, nine playthroughs now that I've beaten it. But I'll probably just wind up doing it over time. Just not necessarily in a rush, I guess. Um... I'll just go through two of these other things and we'll go and toss over to what Sarah's been playing. Um, I'm not super far in Valhalla. I think I've probably only cumulatively played like two, three hours, something like that. Um, but just some quick notes for it would be is that it's very smooth to play on PS5. It's Ooh. at 4K60. I do think it has an interesting take on the stamina system and that um, if you look at something like Bloodborne, where you can't you can regenerate health by striking back at an enemy that damaged you, if you strike back within a certain uh, time frame, you get health back. It's similar to that in that you only lose stamina for uh, pulling off dodges and launching strikes that don't connect with your enemy. If your attacks are hitting, you regenerate stamina. So if you're in a fight where you're just constantly dodging but you're not attacking, you're going to lose the ability to... Um, to dodge so it's kind of like pushing you towards this very aggressive uh gameplay behavior which is very suiting you know given that you're playing is vikings you know fucking people chopping everyone down with axes it's not the most strategic mm. but um I, I do like that aggressive push it kind of separates it even from origins and odyssey um 
Uh, but yeah, it seems like an Assassin's Creed ass Assassin's Creed game from the two to three hours. I'll have more yeah. thoughts as I go along. But uh, yeah, Cyberpunk's kind of like the main game I'm playing right now. And uh, so, oh, you know, I probably should have mentioned this at the fucking top. Uh, Battlefront 2 is free on Epic Games uh, this week. I'm not sure how long it goes for. I just I had a notification yeah. on my phone like, hey, uh, 14th of January, go download Thursday. it for free. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend basically everyone go add it to your account. You don't necessarily have to download it. Just have it so that you have it. And yeah, Battlefront 2 is just a fun as hell uh, game to play, especially with friends. There's no microtransaction bullshit in there anymore. Um, and I think Sarah, you know, especially my thoughts on microtransactions, I don't necessarily care about them one way or the other, but the way it was implemented in two was pretty egregious. Um, but the one mode I want to talk about very specifically in here, they added an Ewok mode that me and my friend, I was playing with one friend, which is like, oh, let's play this, this mode for shits and giggles. It drops you onto Endor as, um, as stormtroopers and there's players playing as Ewoks. Uh, the catch being... It's at night and it's not just like a night level and here's some lights, whatever. It is like pitch fucking dark and they give you a flashlight that's like slowly depleting. You have to like manually turn it off in order to to get the battery back up. And it is the most terrifying fucking thing I've played in game and in a, mm. like in a multiplayer game, like like forget Alien Ace alien isolation you don't know fear until until your battery's running out you hear ewoks running all around you with like freaking red eyes they're tossing grenades at you they're stab stabbing your knees with freaking spears it was it was the most fun i've had with a game in a really fucking long time and i do and i'm gonna make the statement you cannot blame the empire for fucking losing that battle on endor because the ewoks are terrifying little fucking shits so I, I highly recommend everyone here plays it. Um, but I think it's going to do it for me for now, just because of time reasons. And plus, uh, me and Sarah have been playing one thing in common. Yeah, if you so really quick, I'll that. just say what I've been playing like by myself. Um, this is going to sound weird, because I never thought I would say this, but I really want to play more Demon Souls, but I have to wait until the charity stream that I'm a part of next Saturday. But I really want to play more Demon Souls. I never thought I would say that before in, in, my, in my life ever. But I stopped after the first uh, after the first boss, so I could continue playing on on stream next Saturday. But literally, this whole time, I've been thinking about playing more Demon Souls because I'm just legitimately I want to keep playing it. Uh, it's the prettiest game I've seen on PlayStation Five. It's beautiful. It runs like really smoothly. The character customization is a lot of fun. Um, as of right now, I'm like Jose. I'm playing a shit ton of Cyber uh, Cyberpunk, like a lot. Uh, I'm closer to the end, so that's kind of propelled me to keep wanting to play more. Um, uh, Keanu Reeves is a lot nicer to me now, so that's cool. Cool not to ha- not having Keanu Reeves call you a bitch. That's 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 fun. Um, uh, I'm playing Sackboy Adventures on PlayStation Five. I'm co-oping it with a friend of mine, and it is so much fun. It is adorable. It's just a fun little plat- platformer. My only complaint about it is the difficulty fucking spikes at some points and makes some of the levels really impossible, which is kind of weird because we're only like three areas in. So we sh- we sh- it shouldn't even be that, that hard, but it's legitimately gets kind of difficult at random inter- intervals. Um, if I can cut in for just one second, I did buy uh, Sackboy. Me and my girlfriend are planning to play together when when she moves in later this month. Um, I r- always really liked the Little Big Planet franchise, but I always wished it was a better platformer, and that seems exactly what Sackboy is. So I couldn't be it more is. excited uh, to jump in. It's really fun in co-op, but you time. will try to strangle the other person, which is hard for me because my other person lives all the way across the country, <laughs> so I can't put my hands on and just like be like, "Why didn't you make that jump?" Because there's been multiple times where we've been that uh, we've we've been that Gordon Ramsay meme. Where he's like, oh no, it, it's okay, hug, hug, or or why are you a fucking donkey? Because we'll just get pissed at it. Or like, I'll, I mostly get angry because I'm like, how did you make that jump? And he's like, well, oh, the game, the game made me jump less. And I'm like, no, it was you who didn't jump at the exact moment that you had to. <laughs> so so there's like obviously been times where we've been at each other's throats, or I've been at his throat. You'd be yeah. nice to him. Um, but. Or and I'm still playing Shadowlands, Endgame Shadowlands. Uh, the last part of the raid comes out next week, so 
finally going to finish that, finally get that done. Um, uh, but yeah, Jose and I have been playing Cold War Zombies. And it's Cold War Zombies. Yeah. <laughs> like the, it's Call of Duty Zombies. I, it just looks really, really pretty and handles a lot better. <laughs> for I haven't played like... Um, I guess like the last time I like seriously played zombies would probably be Black Ops One. That's you know that was in high school. A bunch of that's basically what everyone in my friend group was playing. And then I dabbled a little bit in uh, Black Ops Two zombies mode, but nowhere to the same extent. Um, so it when did Black Ops Two come out? Twenty twelve. So yeah, like eight years of not playing zombies and jumping back in. It's a fucking it, it's, fun it's ass also time. completely um, new. There's gonna be more. So it's like it's really really weird because we'll like walk up to like a door and be like, "What the fuck does this do?" And then someone will come and un- unlock it. And we're like, "Ah, oh, we're supposed to we're we're supposed to open that." I mean, the one thing I will say is that I I like how they're just throwing cannon out the window and like letting you play as whoever the fuck you want to. Instead of like having like the set zombies characters, you can just pick your like multiplayer avatar or like whoever you you play as, and you can just throw th- throw them in. Um, it gets hard. Like I don't remember zombies being that difficult, or maybe I'm just I- I'm just bad at it. Like I, don't... I think I think we've been doing a good job, but like they added that X fill thing. I think it's like starting this tenth round. You can call for the helicopter to get you out of there, and I think that's generally where because we've been playing with randoms. Uh, that's generally where yeah. our team stretch kind of falls apart, where everyone like rushes over there and they get swarmed. But uh, it, it's it's a fun time. Have you touched it all, Bronson? You said you've been playing Warzone, uh, but I guess that's a, its own free separate thing. Good. Uh, Bronson, sorry, Bro- Mike was muted. Sorry, <laughs> no, I, I, I will likely. Well, Zombies was never my bag. Warzone's okay. Like it's not something I'm gonna put serious money into. You know what I mean? But it is. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean, like, so I, so just for the record, just for some l- l- listeners know, I don't play Call of Duty multiplayer. I think it's dumb. I bought the battle pass so I can play as the character I'm simping for because you have to unlock them in multiplayer and I'm not good. <laughs> so like I bought the battle pass just for that. But the one thing I will say I like that Call of Duty multiplayer does is you can still level up by not playing actual like PV- PvP. You can level up doing zombies, which is totally fine by by me because zombies is strictly co-op. So I can still feel like I'm getting some use I... out of this battle pass that I bought for $9.99 just yeah. by playing zombies. I will agree with you that the multiplayer can be very dumb. But I'm sure a it's damn fun. good time. I just hate it. Also, look at me. I am a female. I open my mouth once. I'm dead in like five seconds. Like, okay, I don't know what it is about Call of Duty specifically, but ever since they introduced, um, you know, party chat on Xbox Live, and then there was the party chat on PS4. Um, Basically, for the majority of games I've played, even on PC, like everyone is in their own group chats, whether it's Discord or their respective platforms. PlayStation's different, um, though. Own proprietary group chats. Um, but I don't know what it is about f- this fucking game on PC or, or PS4 when I'm playing it. Uh, people love talking in, in game chat, and I don't fucking care. I don't want to fucking hear people hear fuck this off little and mute everyone child's mother screaming at them, or have that 10 year old child call me a very derogatory term. Like, I don't need to hear this. Like, that's why I don't play Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. I don't play Warzone because I don't like Battle Royale games. I think they're dumb. If you like that, that's great. I'm all here for you enjoying things. I'm the one that enjoyed Cold Cold Wars campaign, so I'm the weird one. But it's like, I just, I don't buy Call of Duty for multiplayer. I buy them for the campaigns because they're dumb fun. So this is the first time I've played zombies in like 10 plus years. But I'm enjoying myself. It's fun when I play with you, Jose, because you're my friend and you won't judge me if I'm very terrible, even though I placed first that last time, which still baffles me. Just something I've never done before. I, I would like to think um I would like to think in multiplayer games I'm pretty chill if like someone dies, I'm just like, oh yeah, whatever. We're just it's here like for fun. I play it I for fun. Shit. Like I don't play it to be like, oh, we're gonna hit wave like fifty. Like I see some people on like Twitter or they're like, Oh, we hit wave sixty seven. I'm like, how? <laughs> like I'm like, you must have fucking good as hell team <laughs> teamwork. Because as soon as we hit that X fill button, everybody's you see, dead. <laughs> you should see what happens if you uh, vote on four people in Among Us and if Bronson's a ghost. 
That's what happens when you do dumb shit. <laughs> no, I know. I'm, pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised at how much I'm enjoying zombies. I think it's because I'm playing with, with you and not just all random people. That's like, oh, we can shit on these random people because they don't hear us. But it's like, I'm yeah. having fun. And again, I like when Cannon gets thrown out the window when we can just play as anybody in zombies. And it's just like, oh, yeah, there's like a storyline going. And I guess they just released the new map or something. Or the new map was released in beta form. And there's more story stuff in it, which I'm here for. But it's like, oh, nice. yeah, it's it's just a fun, like, relaxing time. We chat. We talk about life. We talk about other shit while we're playing zombies. That's what I think zombies is for to me. Is it's just like to shoot the shit with people. But also play something at the same time. So... I think um, I, I'm, I think one particular point why I'm liking this version of zombies a lot more is that it gives you like yes. very specific yes, markers yes, 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 for yes, where yes, things yes. are. There's a map it and everything. What to do? <laughs> because um, like yeah, because is it? Because there's still like some like Easter eggs, Easter eggy stuff you can do. We can get a bunch of dancing zombies. You can get like some epic uh, guns or whatever, but. It, it's not like older zombies games where just everything was so fucking cryptic and it's just like, well, yeah, I need to go you here, click on this thing, you need to do, spin around three song. times. You need to have, like, two people alive while, like, pressing down on the D-pad at, like, two specific points. <laughs> I'm not here to do the fucking Spongebob spin around three times, bring it around town I mean, like, bullshit. Those, are, those things are the cool. Like, I like that zombie does I think does for that Easter egg stuff. Because it rewards stuff. having four people and having amazing team teamwork and just getting you cool shit. I don't know what's in the one level that we can play right now. Like, I don't know. I haven't looked anything up, but I'm sure that there's something crazy and cryptic in it that we just don't know. Mm -hmm. but... So, fun. So, generally, yeah, Call of Duty, pretty, pretty good time? Pretty good. Still wish the campaign was longer i will scream about that till the ends of the earth but because i've been I'm, I'm going to replay it eventually probably when i finish cyberpunk as like a as like a palette cleanser i'll replay through cold uh through cold wars campaign but i will say you might be better off just doing a quick playthrough of it because it is significantly shorter than the amount of time you have to play yeah. to finish cyberpunk just, just do it now while oh, everything's fresh stay. in your mind. It, 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 it is going to stay fresh. Like Cold War is going to stick with me for like a really long, long time, just because of how good it it was, and how I really hope that they're not going to like back away from doing really good campaigns. I mean, especially because the next game is most likely Modern mm -hmm. Warfare Two. I'm not like scared that they're going to give me a shit cam campaign because they're going to have some shit to live up to if they're going to redo Modern Warfare Two. But. I don't know. Call, call, recent Call of Duty campaigns have hit it out of the park, so I'm really excited to see what next year's or what this year's inevitable Call of Duty is. I forget that we're in 2021, so we're technically going to get a new Call of Duty this this year. Hopefully. Every year. That's it. Let's... So that about wraps it up and for everything you've been I playing? I mean, or? been watching more anime and stuff and catching up on shows... Um, doing like end game wow stuff but that's just like a daily thing that's nothing new or exciting uh or i guess uh blizzard's uh online blizzcon is at the end of the month so we should be getting more info on the next big big update to shadowlands and diablo 4 so i'm ex excited about that because those are two games that i love with all of my heart so really excited to hear more and hopefully we we get that diablo alpha that might be coming. I will be very pleased because I will. I just want to play Diablo Four. Like I just really want to play Diablo. Nice. <laughs> well, well, I think that's probably going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. If uh, was there any topics either of you um, feel passionate about that we might have missed? Second, right. All right, uh, Bronson, you want to go ahead and shout out. Uh, I guess just go ahead and do it again. Uh, who you are, what you do. If you want to shout anything out in particular, maybe one of your servers or anything like that. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm Bronson Lee. I play a lot of Among Us. Um, something that I would probably want to talk about is, I guess we can kind of go over it. I will be on a charity stream um, with the crew from the SDGC podcast um, for their charity stream. I believe it's next Saturday on January 23rd. 
Uh, I will be helping play Among Us uh, with their crew and some of the developers of the game Among Us. So very excited about that. Uh, very excited to support Sorry. the Trevor Project. Um, and yeah, just kind of keep an eye out. Oh, wait. Jonathan, did, 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 did awesome. you just push the, uh, the uh, stream? Yes. Cool. Yeah, come, come see that. Come see the uh, the Souls block. It's going to be, I don't know, it might go bad. I'm not good at it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I have a level yeah, of confidence Yeah, some sort of level. I mean, I can't, the, I can't the promise amount of, it's going to be a fun time because I can't. I can't specify the level, but I do have some yeah, level of confidence. At least, at least someone does. I'm doing it for the kids, <laughs> damn it. I'm doing it for the kids. Let's see. Uh, in terms of times, I believe yours is uh, 9 yes. a.m. PST. I'm, Sarah, nine, nine, I'm to 9 to 12 PS, okay. PST. Um, it's early for me, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to be nice and fresh. Bronson, do you know what... Uh, do you I know have no idea. Up? I would say check out uh, twitter.com slash official SDGC for that. Or if you want to follow me on Twitter, for some reason, it's at Bronson Lee. Bronson is a meme boy. You should absolutely go follow him. Um, if you're listening to the audio version, the links are down below. If you're watching video, uh, his link is, or I guess his at is on screen. Um, let's see. I'm not on that stream, but I, I did just finish my uh, the script for my Doom video essay. So the article version is actually ready to post whenever I decide to do it. I did do a poll where I asked people, do you want it published now or do you just want it uh, simultaneous with the video version? They said that uh, they want to be doctors and have patients. Um, so I'll go ahead and just wait on posting that. The video for that is going to take... I, I'm a very busy person. I work like 48 plus hours a week. Um, so expect that at some period of time because I put a lot of effort into my video editing. It's not just like slap one gameplay mm -hmm. clip and call it a day. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. I'm very proud of how at least the writing portions come out. I haven't done any of the video editing for it yet. Um, yeah, I think that's going to about do it. Like, comment, subscribe, the usual stuff. Check out... Uh, Sarah's stream on Saturday. Check out Bronson's stream please, next Saturday. Please come or and... share and or donate if you can. We truly uh, appreciate it. And uh, Ranch Fair is the superior grass, condiment grass, to grass, put grass, on grass, basically grass. everything. Especially pizza. <laughs> Bronson, I'll give you the last uh, words. That's probably a good idea. Well, thanks for watching, listening. Um, feel free to come on back anytime. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>